Summary of Be Mine Forever Written by Kennedy Ryan Chapter 1 Title, Shadows of Street Art, A Journey Through Fame, Friendship, and Redemption Cameron Mitchell sat uncomfortably beneath the harsh glare of the studio lights, his squinted eyes, betraying his unease. Across from him sat Shelby Jennings, the interviewer, whose practiced smile seemed to reflect the glossy sheen of her persona. As Shelby welcomed Cameron to the show and praised his inclusion in the 30 under 30 list, Cameron's response remained guarded, his discomfort evident in the tension of his shoulders and the tightness of his smile. Glad to be here, Cameron replied, his words laced with a hint of reservation that Shelby seemed eager to brush aside. She prodded him about his rise to fame as a street artist, particularly his viral success with graffiti in Paris. Cameron's answers were measured, his reluctance to delve into personal details palpable. As Shelby pressed for insights into his upbringing and the roots of his artistic inspiration, Cameron felt a familiar sense of unease creeping over him. The mention of his past, of the hood where he had grown up, brought forth memories he had long sought to bury. I believe the word you're searching for is hood. Were you going to say, I grew up in the hood? Cameron's response was tinged with defiance, a refusal to be defined by the hardships of his past. Yet beneath his bravado lay a deep-seated pain, a sense of loss for the innocence he had sacrificed on the streets of Barfield Projects. As Shelby probed further, delving into his connections with Walsh Bennett and Karras, Cameron's discomfort intensified. The mention of their names dredged up memories of betrayal and heartache, wounds that had yet to fully heal. It's okay. That's where I'm from. I'm not ashamed of it, Cameron stated, his voice tinged with bitterness. His journey from the streets of Barfield Projects to the heights of international fame had been fraught with challenges, yet he had never allowed himself to be defined by his past. The conversation shifted to Wallace H. Bennett, Cameron's best friend, and Karis, his ex-wife. Shelby's probing questions touched upon the tangled web of emotions that bound them together, revealing the fractures that lay beneath the surface of their seemingly perfect lives. Despite his reluctance to discuss the painful subject, Cameron found himself drawn into the conversation, his guarded facade crumbling under Shelby's relentless scrutiny. He spoke of his friendship with Walsh, of the betrayal that had shattered their bond, and of Karis, the woman who had once been his wife. It's complicated, Cameron admitted, his voice betraying the turmoil of emotions that churned within him. His relationship with Walsh and Karis was a tangled mess of love and betrayal, a knot that seemed impossible to unravel. As the interview drew to a close, Cameron felt a sense of relief wash over him, grateful to escape the suffocating confines of the studio. Yet his reprieve was short-lived, as a phone call from Walsh Bennett shattered the fragile peace of his solitude. Hey, Cam, Walsh's voice crackled through the phone, his tone tinged with urgency. I need your help. Cameron's initial reluctance gave way to a sense of duty, as Walsh explained the reason for his call. Karis, pregnant with twins, was in distress, and Walsh, halfway across the world in Hong Kong, was unable to be by her side. Despite his reservations, Cameron agreed to check on Karis, setting aside his own pain and resentment for the sake of friendship. As he arrived at Karis's doorstep, he was met with a scene of chaos and uncertainty, his heart racing with fear and anticipation. Discovering Karis in the throes of premature labor, Cameron's initial shock gave way to a sense of urgency and responsibility. With Karis's condition deteriorating, Cameron called for emergency assistance while struggling to navigate his own tumultuous emotions. As the ambulance raced towards the hospital, Cameron found himself grappling with the weight of his past and the uncertain future that lay ahead. Despite the pain and betrayal that defined his relationships, he remained steadfast in his commitment to Karis and the unborn children she carried. In the midst of crisis, Cameron found unexpected solace in the bonds of family and friendship. Despite the shadows of his past, he emerged stronger and more resilient, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the ambulance disappeared into the night, Cameron remained at Karis's side, a silent guardian amidst the chaos of life. In that moment, he realized that true strength lay not in fame or fortune, but in the bonds of love and loyalty that endure in the face of adversity. As dawn broke over the city skyline, 
Cameron watched over Karis and the newborn twins, a sense of peace settling over him. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, he knew that he was not alone, that he had friends and family who would stand by his side through thick and thin. In the end, Cameron's journey was not just one of fame and success, but of redemption and renewal. Through the trials and tribulations of his past, he had emerged stronger and more resilient, ready to embrace the future with hope and determination. And as he looked down at the tiny, fragile lives cradled in his arms, Cameron knew that he had found his purpose, his reason to keep fighting, no matter what obstacles lay in his path. For in the end, it was love that mattered most, love that had the power to heal even the deepest wounds of the soul. Chapter 2 Title, Unexpected Beginnings In the bustling maternity ward, the air hummed with anticipation and anxiety. Karis Bennett lay on the hospital bed, her face contorted with pain, her hand tightly clasped around Cam's, who stood by her side, his expression a mix of concern and helplessness. Mr., the doctor hesitated, glancing down at Karis's chart, Bennett, your wife should be just fine. I'm not. He's not, Cam interjected, his voice firm, his eyes meeting Karis's in silent solidarity. Cam and Karis exchanged a look, both eager to correct the mistake hanging in the air, like an awkward cloud. He's not my husband, Karis clarified with remarkable composure, considering the waves of pain crashing through her body moments before. Anymore, I mean. My husband's away. He's, um, Cam is. I'm a family friend, Cam interjected, his voice steady, though his mind raced with the complexity of their situation. The last thing either of them needed was to air their personal dynamics in the midst of the sterile maternity ward. Where's my doctor? Karis inquired, her voice tinged with anxiety as she rubbed a hand over her swollen belly, her gaze fixed on the substitute physician. She's on vacation, the young doctor, whom Cam couldn't help but liken to Doogie Hauser replied, glancing at the chart in his hands. I'm sure Dr. Edwards didn't anticipate you'd be delivering this early. Am I? Karis's voice wavered with uncertainty, her eyes pleading for reassurance. Delivering, I mean? It's early. Isn't there any way we can delay this? Bed rest? Hang me upside down, or something? I'm sorry, Mrs. Bennett, Doogie said gently, his tone tinged with sympathy. But these babies are coming today. Will they be okay? Karis's voice dropped to a frightened whisper, her hand tightening around Cam's. Cam squeezed her hand in return, offering what comfort he could, though his own heart raced with worry. He knew the gravity of the situation, the fragility of life hanging in the balance. It's not uncommon for twins to come early, Doogie explained, his hand slipping into the slits of his white coat. And even though it's early, they are viable. As Cam's phone rang, he stepped away from the bed to answer it, recognizing Walsh's name flashing on the screen. Hey, Bennett, Walsh's voice crackled through the line, tinged with concern. Cam, no. Karis whispered urgently, her eyes wide with panic as another contraction gripped her. Cam, I'm going crazy here, Walsh's voice tightened, the distance palpable in his tone. Was Karis home? It's been hours since we talked. Walsh, man, Cam hesitated, glancing at Karis, who shook her head imperceptibly, her eyes pleading for him to shield Walsh from the truth. Karis is in labor. A heavy silence enveloped the line, pregnant with disbelief and panic. No, she can't be, Walsh's voice trembled with fear. It's, it's too early. Maybe just Braxton Hicks, or false labor? We're at the hospital, Cam replied, his voice steady, despite the turmoil swirling within him. And the twins are coming soon. I'm not there. How the hell am I halfway around the world when my kids are being born? Walsh's voice cracked with anguish, his helplessness echoing through the receiver. The hell you are, Cam countered firmly, his jaw clenched with determination. Karis emitted a subdued sound, her head buried into the pillow her knuckles white as she clutched the sheets in a vice-like grip. I need to speak to Karis, Walsh's voice quivered with urgency. Uh, she's kind of in the middle of a contraction, Cam replied, torn between honoring Karis's wishes and Walsh's desperate need for reassurance. Contraction? Walsh's voice spiked with panic. She's in pain? 
Another wave of agony washed over Karis, her stifled moans punctuating the tense atmosphere. No, but I don't think she wants you to hear how much it hurts, Cam admitted, his heart heavy with the weight of their shared burden. Fuck that. FaceTime me, Walsh demanded, his tone resolute. FaceTime? Dude, Cam protested weakly, though he knew there was no denying Walsh's request in such a pivotal moment. Just do it, Walsh insisted. Cam complied, angling the phone so Walsh could see Karis, her face twisted in agony as another contraction gripped her with merciless intensity. Karis, usually composed and strong, succumbed to the primal instinct of pain, her scream reverberating through the room, drowning out the rhythmic beeping of the heart monitor. Baby, breathe, Walsh's face appeared on the screen, his features eerily composed despite the turmoil raging within him. You can do this. Doogie, the attending physician, approached the bed, his demeanor, calm yet authoritative. It's time to push, he announced, his voice cutting through the chaos, like a beacon of guidance. Are they? Karis's voice trembled with anticipation, her eyes searching Doogie's for reassurance. They seem fine, Doogie replied, his expression hopeful. Not breach, just ready to make their appearance a little earlier than expected. I'll need some big pushes here soon. Cam's breath caught in his throat as he watched the scene unfold before him, his mind swirling with a whirlwind of emotions. Sweat trickled down his neck, his palms clammy with nerves. This is too much, Cam thought, his mind flashing back to a painful memory he had long tried to bury. The last time I was in a hospital. Cam's voice trailed off, the unspoken words hanging heavy in the air, laden with grief and sorrow. Karis, I. Cam's gaze locked with hers, a silent plea for understanding passing between them. I get it, Karis whispered, her eyes filled with a depth of understanding that transcended words. I know, Cam. You've done more than enough. As Joe, Karis's steadfast friend, entered the room, Cam felt a surge of gratitude wash over him, her presence a beacon of strength and support in their time of need. Cam, I've got it, Joe declared, her voice steady her eyes reflecting unwavering determination. Cam nodded gratefully, his heart heavy yet buoyed by the knowledge that Karis was in capable hands. Take care of my girl, Cam implored, his voice laced with gratitude as he watched Joe assume her role as Karis's unwavering guardian. Of course I will, Joe replied, her voice tinged with warmth as she offered Karis a reassuring smile. What do you think I came here for? As Cam stepped out of the room, his mind awash with conflicting emotions, he couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope amidst the chaos. In the face of adversity, they would endure. And amidst the pain and uncertainty, new beginnings awaited, filled with hope, love, and the unwavering strength of the human spirit.